Apple Maps or Google Maps? Which one is better for navigation when driving or navigating complex public transport systems, but also in other areas? Ratings, remembering where you parked your car, CarPlay versus Android Auto, and so many other areas which these navigation apps are now evolving into. So let's start with the overall user interface. Now I know these two apps are very polished. They've both been around for many, many years already, but there are still some differences where certain design choices have been made. Now when navigating somewhere on Google Maps, you see all of the options at the top of the screen and how long each transport method will take. With Apple Maps, however, you have to tap into each option to see how long it will take. But similarly, Google has its search bar at the very top of the phone, whereas Apple has it at the bottom near where your thumb rests and so it's easier to actually get to and actually use. But generally speaking, though Apple definitely takes the less is more approach, I think the UI elements Google actually gives you makes for a better overall app. Everything you want is available and it actually requires less taps of the screen to get there. So I'm gonna score this one to Google Maps. Now what the app looks like is one thing, but how good are they at actually doing their job of getting you from point A to point B? Well, this is an interesting one because it generally depends on where you live and which areas Apple and Google have mapped better than the other. Now I live on the coast in the south of the UK, so I'm not in like central London, I'm not in New York, but I do travel. I've done trips to Barcelona, Las Vegas, London, and with a mixture of walking and driving and public transport, now, from my experience, I would say that when driving, both of them come pretty close to each other. Now, sometimes one would be slightly better than another. I do think that Google's traffic reporting is better than Apple, although I thought Google's acquisition of Waze a few years ago meant that we get like Waze-like features in Google Maps where we can report issues whilst driving, but apparently that's not gonna happen. But generally speaking, they are very, very close. But even driving around my local area here, it took me all of a few minutes to find Google trying to send me some very strange ways. Now for me though, it is when switching to public transport where Google Maps takes the win. Now whilst in Barcelona recently, I found Google Maps to be so much more reliable at giving me the best routes and the best times. Now ignore the significant delays you see here, that's just uh, good old British public transport uh, and also the reason why we don't really rely on public transport. Um, being able to easily scroll through all of the available options for the underground or the metro, the bus and the train to find the best way to get to your destination works so much better with Google Maps. Now with Apple Maps, giving me recommendations that would still get me there, but in longer times and in longer routes. I actually noticed a, a YouTube friend of mine, Shervin Shares, who's like a Apple fanboy till he dies. Come back to the dark side, Pete. Also mentioned in a video that he switches to Google Maps for the Metro. So one thing that Apple Maps doesn't do is it just says exit and then walk over there. Whereas Google Maps right here, it says exit via 8th Ave and 16th Street Southwest corner. See right here, this is the 16th Street Southwest corner. This is the Northwest corner. So we gotta go this way. Thank you, Google. But then switches back to Apple Maps when he's above ground. So it's nice to hear the same from other people as well. Now there is no real clear winner here. Since it depends on your location, and whether you drive or take public transports. I'm going to call it a draw, but if you drive, then maybe score one to Apple here. And if you use public transport, score one to Google instead. Head southeast on Hans Pond Road towards Admirals Road, then turn right onto Admirals Road. Speaking of actually navigating, how good are the voice commands each app gives you? Now I took a quick spin around the studio here to try and show you what happens. Now, always, every single time, Apple would give me much earlier instructions. So as I was approaching a junction or intersection or roundabout, whatever you want to call it, I knew ahead of time which direction I needed to go. And I knew more details about it. Use the roundabout to make a U-turn, then turn right into the car park. Whereas Google Maps would wait until I was basically at the junction already, like probably looking lost or confused, before it gave me only the most basic instructions. Like at the very end here, turn right onto this road. Cool, okay, and then what? So a clear win here for Apple. Next up, let's talk about discoverability, reviews, and recommendations. And unfortunately, it's not really 
a fair comparison here. Now with Apple recently pulling their ratings and reviews in-house rather than outsourcing it to, I think it was Yelp they used to use, it's been reduced to either a thumbs up or thumbs down. And sometimes you can do a thumbs up or thumbs down on specific categories like customer service or food and drink. Images are also crowdsourced with a mixture of images people have either uploaded, but also taken from Wikipedia, TripAdvisor, Foursquare and other places. But Google takes the overall win here. Now their simple but still detailed star rating system allows people to leave written reviews on what was good, what was bad, and the owners can respond to feedback. You can even search within reviews for specifics. Now I've done this before by searching for things like family, December or Christmas to find reviews specifically from a family staying somewhere over Christmas. And it works really well. Now you also get direct links and live prices to book tickets, information on the busiest times to visit, and just so much more with Google Maps. It's just not even a fair comparison here. Apple have a lot of ground to catch up on. Next up is one to ruffle the feathers of Apple and Android fanboys alike. And that is Apple CarPlay versus Android Auto. Now each of them have their strengths and their weaknesses. Apple CarPlay makes better use of the screen by having directions show up in a separate part of the screen, whereas Android also will cover up the map. And Apple CarPlay also intelligently shows and hides elements like when getting near your home, it will show you a button to control Apple Home accessories. Whereas Android also just does not. I have to go through a lengthy process to open smart things and then tap to open like my garage door for instead, for example. Now, Android also does allow you to quick reply to messages with pre-generated responses, which is handy. But I also found that in some cars, not all cars, I'm not able to enter text when the car is moving, like moving at all, like even at slow speeds. Now, if I wanted to quickly navigate somewhere, I know that sounds like a sensible feature to have to, you know, stop you entering and tapping things on your screen whilst you're driving. But when I'm crawling out of my driveway or you know, creeping up slowly at traffic lights, wanting to quickly input my destination, it is really frustrating to have that locked off until I come to a complete stop with Android also. So overall, I am gonna give the win here to Apple CarPlay. Now next up are what I would call additional miscellaneous features, and we're gonna score them as we go. Now both Google and Apple Maps let you create lists of favorite locations, but Google does take this a step further with being able to share this list with others and makes it editable so they can also contribute. Now I did find this really useful recently visiting Las Vegas for CES early this year. I could plot out all the locations for the events and share this with those coming with me so we knew where everything was. So point to Google for this feature. Now finding friends or family with Apple, this is a totally separate app called Find My which does work great. Now, Google has this built into Google Maps, which is useful when you are browsing around or navigating somewhere to also see that maybe your friends or family are in the same location and you can maybe meet up with them. Now, I do think Find My is the better overall app, but since this is a Maps comparison, it has to be Google here since it is all baked into the one app. However, Apple Maps does have a killer feature which not many people seem to know about, and that is being able to remember where you parked your car. Now, Apple does this completely automatically behind the scenes when it disconnects Bluetooth or CarPlay from your car and gives you a quick and easy way to find your car. Now, Google does offer this as a feature, but it requires you to manually save the location each time you want to use it, which kind of defeats the purpose of using it. It really means that nobody ever does use it, therefore kind of a bit of a pointless feature, I feel. So win goes to Apple Maps here. Google does have a timeline feature which lets you revisit where you've been, at what time and what day. It is actually really useful if you wanna you know, scroll back to see what you were doing on a certain day or maybe you can't remember the name of a place that you visited. Assuming, of course, you're okay with Google collecting like all that level, level of data on what you're doing, of course. Both Apple and Google also have lock screen integrations, though Apple is definitely winning the way here. Like by clearly displaying directions on the always on display, Whereas when you use Google Maps, you have to tap to wake the screen up. And even then you just get a small bar showing you directions. Whereas Apple will give you the full map, even when the phone is locked. Now with that said, both apps work with the dynamic island on the iPhone. And on Android, Google Maps will pop up in a separate window. So you can still use navigation whilst using other apps. But I will give the win here to Apple for the much better lock screen integration. So all in all, Google Maps just about takes the win here. 
But with that said, it's not clearly that simple since it just depends on what your use case is. Whilst things like reviews are nice to have within like the Google Maps interface and great for discovering new places or making sure the place you're visiting is actually decent, some people just want navigation when driving, in which case Apple Maps, at least in these recent tests, seems to perform better that way. So let me know which one wins for you and why down in the comments down below. Also, quick recommendation of my own here. Now, this video isn't sponsored, but we are currently running a promotion, a kind of a competition with one password where you can win a Google Pixel 8 Pro, Pixel Buds, and a Pixel Watch 2 all together. So if you are looking for a cross-platform password manager, you can get 50% off of one password and use the link down below. Now, I've been using them for something like five, maybe even 10 years or so now. And the first 1,500 people who sign up for a plan will be entered to win a Pixel 8 Pro headphones and a watch as well. So that is a 1 in 1,500 chance of winning. So pretty good odds. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.